Hi, so I'm going to talk about uh, the interaction of free surface viscous flows um, with corners. And this was a problem that was originally motivated by how lava flows interact with obstructions and topography. Um, these are two pictures from Hawaii, where you can see the topography has a very strong influence on the lava. But it also um, has uh, important applications to the design of barriers. This picture here is from when the barriers were designed uh, on Mount Etna in the 1980s to divert the lava flow. And so we're trying to understand how does the flow interact with those barriers. Um, but the interaction of viscous free surface flows with obstructions and topography is also important for um, manufacturing processes like 3D printing and coating flows. Um, it's also important for uh, the interaction, understanding the interaction of ice sheets with topography. Um, and just to illustrate the kind of problems we're interested in, here are two pictures of our experiments. And today I'm going to be particularly interested in um, how the flow behaves downstream of the obstruction and what controls the shape of the dry region downstream of an obstruction. And so we'll sort of create an idealized model to try and understand that. And this was work I did in the UK with um, Andrew Hogg and Herbert Hopper. So um, we'll start with quite a simple model for viscous flow um, going around a corner. So this is very low Reynolds number and we'll have a constant flux line source that's um, semi-infinite in this direction. Um, and if there was no obstructions, uh, this would lead to a constant thickness, constant velocity sheet flow with the um, thickness of the flow given by this expression H infinity, where Q is the uh, constant flux line source strength and mu is the viscosity of the fluid. Um, so that's sort of the far field depth. And then we allow the channel wall, the semi-infinite channel to open and we'll take that opening to the origin um, by an angle alpha. And then we're interested in how is the flow perturbed as it goes around this corner and what controls the shape of this dry region and um, the sort of edge, the contact line. Um, and so we'll scale uh, flow thicknesses with the sort of far field flow thickness H infinity and we'll scale the X and Y coordinates and with H infinity cot beta, which is just chosen to remove any constants from the governing equation. And the X direction is the downslope direction and the Y direction is perpendicular to that. And the uh, slope is at an angle beta to the horizontal. So we take the wall vertex to be the origin and we'll use lubrication theory, which is just assuming that the vertical velocities uh, are negligible in comparison to the velocities perpendicular to the plane. And then we'll use mass conservation to obtain the steady governing equation. So we're particularly interested in, um, well, we're only really interested in the steady equation, which arises um, sort of uh, after a long time. And we're interested in the, the steady shape of the contact line. The flux is given by this expression here where um, the one is associated with uh, gravity acting parallel in the downstream, parallel to the plane in the downstream X direction. And the dh dx and dh dy are associated with gravity acting into the plane, normal to the plane, um, and they're associated with hydrostatic pressure gradients. And taking the divergence of the flux to be zero in the steady state, you get this um, nonlinear uh, advection diffusion type equation for the flow thickness H, the dimensionless flow thickness H. And we have that as well as boundary conditions of no flux into the walls. And we also must have H returning to one, which is that the flow thickness returns to its unperturbed value far upstream and far cross, cross stream of the wall. So this is a, a single parameter model because this governing equation, the boundary conditions, um, they only depend on the opening angle alpha. And we're interested in really determining how far in the steady state does the flow detach from the wall? And we'll call this dimensionless distance D, um, the distance along the wall at which you get detachment. And so we'll just have D as a function of alpha. And we're interested in determining um, what that F of alpha is. And we can sort of already say some things such as that F must go to infinity as alpha goes to zero, because as this wall becomes um, closer and closer to the X direction, the detachment must go further and further downstream. And if the wall was just, um, a straight line all the way along the x-axis, there would never be any detachment, so f would be infinity. So that's what happens as alpha goes to zero. And we're also interested in what happens as um, alpha goes to pi. If the wall sort of went straight back on itself, um, how far up the other side of the wall does the fluid run? So we can integrate the system numerically using a finite element method. 
And these are just some contour plots of the flow thickness. And you can see the contact line here and here. This is for alpha is pi by four and um, alpha is pi by two. Um, and the flow direction goes from left to right. Um, and we've marked on the distance D here where the detachment occurs. So just to give you some idea of what um, these flow behaviors look like. And I'm happy to answer any questions about how um, this numerical method works, but I won't go into details now. So far downstream, um, we expect that the behavior becomes self-similar because if we take this governing equation um, and we say, well, far downstream when X is large, the second x derivative, the second order x derivative on the right hand side must become negligible in comparison to the other two terms. And so we obtain this approximate equation here. Um, and this equation, that system is um, self-similar in the steady flow with y going like the square root of x. And so we uh, seek a similarity solution where eta is y on the square root of x. And we write chi of eta is h of x, y. And we obtain this second order ODE for chi. And to solve that numerically, we shoot from uh, e to zero, uh, and it must be linear near um, h is chi is zero, and we shoot so that a chi or h goes to one in the far field to match with the boundary conditions. Um, and the shooting, the iterative procedure obtains that e to zero must be 1.58. And so this red dotted line is the similarity solution. And then here are some cross sections of the numerical solution um, calc, uh, scaled uh, in the similarity variable. And you see that as we go further downstream, they agree, um, the agreement with the similarity solution improves until it's very good, um, even just at x is five. And so this seems like a good solution downstream. Um, and we can also plot the behavior along the uh, x-axis. So this is along the center line, uh, just sort of along the wall and beyond the wall. Um, and along y equals zero, we must have eta is zero. And so chi must be a constant. And so this line is a contour of h. And so far downstream, um, these numerical solutions for various values of alpha all agree with the predicted value of 0.812 of the similarity solution. Um, and you can see there are small x gradients, which um, sort of agrees with the similarity solution because we've neglected that second order x term. But there's weak agreement um, upstream near the wall vertex. Um, and this is because there are large x gradients. And so it's not agreeing with this value of h. And so the neglecting of that second order x term um, sort of gives you large errors near the wall vertex. And so to determine the detachment distance d, we really need to understand the behavior near the, near the vertex um, and near the wall. Um, and so although this similarity solution is interesting and we'll come back to it later, um, it doesn't really help us near the wall. And so we need a slightly different approach. And it turns out for the case of alpha equals pi, there's actually um, an exact solution. And so uh, if you consider this as the sort of behavior in real physical space for alpha is pi, the boundary conditions are dh dy at the wall, which sort of goes back on itself. And the flux is in on this side and it comes around and then there's this contact line where h is zero and h goes to one in this direction and in this direction. And we can actually use a conformal mapping to open up this wall um, so that we have, uh, it sort of opens up into uh, the t positive and t negative. Uh, so it's just a st one straight, single straight line by using the square root of z as our conformal mapping to this space here. Um, and we get a contact line where h is zero. Um, the boundary condition just becomes dh ds is zero in this uh, new plane. And h must go to one as t goes to minus infinity, just trap, um, mapping the uh, boundary conditions across. And it turns out uh, that h is just a function of t and it's independent of s, as you can see, as I've plotted here. Um, and I'll show that on the next slide. So applying that conformal mapping to the governing equation, we obtain this equation in the st space. And if we say, if we guess that h is just a function of t, um, we get a solution which just keeps this term here and this term here. And it turns out that that equation is actually the same equation that governs chi that arose for the similarity solution far downstream. And so h is just given exactly by chi of t, where chi is the numerical solution to this equation, and t um, can be obtained by rearranging 
the conformal map here. And so H is given by chi uh, and T is rearranged to this function here in braces uh, in Cartesian space where the plus or minus just depends on which side of the wall you're on uh, originally. Um, so that's an exact solution for alpha is pi. And um, we can use that to uh, determine its contours. So they are given by this expression here where chi of eta star is h star. So for a fixed h star, you've got a fixed eta star um, and that gives you your contours. The uh, contours here are compared to the numerical solution. You can see these dashed lines compare very well for this uh, exact solution. And it's a useful check on our numerical method as well. Um, and for eta zero, so when chi is equal to zero, we remember that chi of zero equals zero is given by the eta zero from the earlier solution, the similarity solution. And so when we set eta star as eta zero, that is when, um, that's when h is zero. And so it gives us the contact line. And if you also set y as zero, you can obtain the detachment location x. So it must be minus eta naught squared on four just by looking at this expression here. And so that tells you how far up the other side of the wall the flow goes before detaching. And recalling that this value of eta naught, you get that it's just minus 0.62. And so we found d for um, pi, alpha is pi. Um, uh, but we also notice that uh, that this idea um, of the exact solution can help us in other situations when alpha is not pi. Because we notice that the contours of that exact solution given by this expression here uh, look a bit like y going like the square root of x, which looks a bit like our similarity solution, which raises the possibility of can we do better with our similarity solution from earlier? Um, and the answer is yes, because if we look at these contours, the contact line is actually the same as the similarity solution, but it's just offset by this amount eta star squared on four, or for the contact line, just eta naught, eta naught squared on four. So we try our similarity solution again, but this time we offset the x value by a distance x1. So we move the similarity solution upstream and we pick x1 to be minus 0.62 to match the contact line with the contact line from the exact solution. Um, and then we can compare that contact line for the offset translated similarity solution to the contact line for various values of the uh, wall opening angle. Obviously for alpha is pi, there's exact agreement. Um, and for other values of alpha, particularly large values of alpha, there's very good agreement between the, um, tra this translated similarity solution um, and the numerical prediction for the contact line. Um, indeed, there's much better agreement than with the untranslated similarity solution, which is shown by this red dashed line. Um, so then to work out the detachment distance D, we just say, well, that must be approximately where the wall intersects that contact line. So going back, you see it must be where these lines end at where the wall is. Um, and then we just calculate the intersection of the wall with this sort of idealized um, uniform, universal shape of the untranslated, of the translated similarity solution. And that gives us this expression here, D, for the detachment distance where eta naught squared, uh, eta naught arises from that solution um, and alpha is the opening angle. And we compare that to the numerical prediction for D and it shows very good agreement for uh, a wide range of values of alpha. And so this, this method of translating the similarity solution according to the exact solution for alpha is pi actually would work for any nonlinear wall shape. It just, it's just where the wall intersects with that universal um, translated similarity shape. Um, we carried out some experiments using laser lines. Um, and this is just a photo. And sort of behind the gate there is just a constant, uh, constantly held um, sort of uh, gate uh, to provide a constant flux. And we calculated how far along the wall the detachment occurs. And in this plot, uh, you can see the experimental results are compared to the numerical results and the prediction of that uh, universal translated similarity solution. So the red, red crosses, red pluses are the experimental results and there's good agreement with the theory. We've also included for small alpha, this expression, our analytic expression for D um, approximates just as eta naught on alpha squared. And we've included that as a yellow dot dashed line. And that also shows good agreement with the experimental and numerical results showing that you can 
what seems at first like quite a difficult thing to understand, we can actually obtain quite a nice, simple analytic expression for the detachment distance that could be useful um, for sort of rule of thumb calculations. Um, just finally to note that the ideas I've talked about today could quite simply be extended to the porous analog where your wall is just an impermeable barrier and you're in a porous medium. You just change um, some of the exponents in the partial differential equation um, and it's still uh, self-similar far downstream with y going like the square root of x. You change the value of e to naught and the exact solution still works in the same way. Um, and again, you just get a different offset because of the different value of e to naught. Um, and the detachment approximation is given by the same expression, but with a different e to naught. So just to conclude, um, we've obtained some simple expressions for the detachment location and the contours of these flows. Um, and the details are in this philosophical transactions paper, shadow free surface Stokes flow around a corner. Um, or if you've got any questions that you can't answer today, um, do drop me an email. Uh, and further work is to consider surface tension or a yield stress uh, in these flows. And I'd like to thank the LMS and the EPSRC. Thank you.